After a traumatic ride introducing a total beginner leading to a near-death experience, I think it's time we talked about how trim works in helicopters within DCS. Trim is rather detached from reality in flight sims, and in that respect not realistic or intuitive. We'll use the Apache, but this discussion applies to all DCS helicopters. We can demonstrate how trim works within a real helicopter with an elegant piece of technology from a more civilised age. A Microsoft Sidewinder 2 force feedback joystick. So we're going to start by opening up the controls indicator with right control and enter. So we can see on the top left we've got a little white diamond, that's the current position of our joystick. And then we've got a little X, and the X represents the position of our trim, so that's the centre of our trim. On the bottom we've got the same again but for the rudder pedals. So how does this trim system work? So in the real aircraft, the joystick or cyclic is held in place with magnets, magnetic brakes, and it wants to pull the stick to the middle of the brakes. Now this is what happens with a force feedback joystick too. And the force trim button releases those brakes. When I push it forwards, the motors in my case stop resisting me and I can move the base around freely, and when I let go, it stays put. And it becomes a new centre, so it wants to return to that new position. This makes it very intuitive, you just press and hold the trim, put it where you want, and release. And it doesn't matter where I put it, or how many times I trim, I will always have that physical sensation of where the joystick is relative to me, and because of that I know how much force and what I'm applying on the aircraft. And even if I wanted to, I can return to centre essentially blindfolded. Now this doesn't apply to the spring driven joystick, because it doesn't have that sensation. If I trim with the joystick here, well hold on to this one so it doesn't whack itself. So I'm going to move forwards and trim, and it's jumping around a bit because I've got two axes fighting at once, so let's try and there we go. Let's try and trim again. You see the stick there jumps to mirror the stick I've just trimmed, but here's the problem. This stick now needs to return to centre when I release the controls, and so I'm holding the trim forward and left, but my stick isn't. So now I don't know where my stick is, I can't ever guess or know. And this is a serious problem, it gets you very confused if you don't know what's happening, which is why this controls indicator top left is so important. Because it's simple and intuitive on the actual aircraft, but when you're using a home joystick, you get confused. So we're in forward flight now, and you can see I've got to pull a fair bit forwards to keep us flying at this speed. Now, if I just apply the trim with my force feedback joystick and let go, it will maintain that position, and then I can make small corrections from this new central position. It's nice and simple. And if I wanted to slow down, I can press and hold, bring it back to where I think I want to hold it, and release then I can make corrections as I go, and I've always got that centre point that I've set with the trim, and it's nice and simple and intuitive. Now when I do this with a sprung joystick, there's a whole bunch of new problems to worry about. So we're now in the sim with the non-force feedback joystick, and as you can see I'm pulling the stick all the way to the right and forwards to keep us in a roughly forward flight. So I'll apply the trim, and we'll reset it. So now the helicopter's reasonably stable and we can see the controls are holding us in place. Now there's a consequence to every time you trim, so if I trim really far forwards and let go, and we enable active pause, just so we don't crash the bar and demonstrate this, so we're going to trim all the way forwards. Now when we pull the stick back, you see we can't go all the way back anymore. I've hit the physical limit of my joystick, but I haven't been able to trim all the way, so I need to trim turn to centre and then move again to get all the way over, and that can get you in some serious trouble. That's one of those cases where a trim reset would be very, very useful. But we don't have one. So you've got to be very mindful of doing large trim corrections. Trimming all the way forwards is a very bad idea because then you can't, you can't roll uh, pitch backwards, or you can't roll to the other side. You lose the amount that you trim in the other direction. And so you need to be very, very careful with that. A lot of people are getting into trouble because they overdo their trim, and then they panic. They think, oh no, I'm going forwards too fast. Quick, pull back. And they hit that limit. They can't pull back hard enough. And so you end up crashing or losing controls, kind of floundering around. It's a serious problem with the disconnect between our physical controls and the in-cockpit controls, which is why that overlay in the top left is invaluable as you learn. 
the second place where people are getting into trouble is the trimmer mode. Now you can set this under the special options AH64D. Now we have a couple modes, we have instant, central and joystick without springs and force feedback. Now whichever one you want is going to vary depending on exactly how you want it to behave, but they all have their own problems. So instant, let's demonstrate that one first. So we're in sim now with the instant trimmer mode and what this does is it applies our new trim immediately when we push the button for trim. So I push it in and immediately we start pitching down. So I'm going to ease off the controls, so what happened there? Well essentially it doubles any input we have, so it applies the trim and then it applies what we're currently holding with the joystick. So if you do not return your hand to the centre as you do it, you're going to find your input doubled. So if you make a big trim change, suddenly you're pulling it very hard. So you've got to remember to pull yourself to centre as you do it. So let's uh, recover the helicopter, get back into control. So in effect you can fly the, set, the offset. So if I add a small uh, couple percent forwards with my stick and then trim, 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 trim. You see I keep trimming forwards, forwards and forwards and if you're not aware that this is what's going on, not only can you lose where you are, but you don't realise that you're pitching so far forward, especially if you have a lot of Correction. So say I'm trying to come to a hover and for whatever mad reason I'm applying lots of trim as I do it. Okay, so we're in a kind of very rough hover, we're wobbling around a bit but that's fine. So imagine you're setting up for this and you're thinking, okay, so I'm holding the stick forward and left all the time, I'm going to add a bit of trim. And now suddenly you've whoop, you spun around because the rudder is now absolutely full left. Because it's multiplied it and you didn't return to centre in time. And now that you've uh, recovered from that, you start thinking, okay, so now I need to add a bit to the right, and suddenly it jerks to the right, and you've got to remember to centre it with your feet every time you trim. Now, this, the instant trimmer is better suited to making a small correction and trimming repeatedly in that respect, because you avoid that massive jump. But there is one other consequence to it, which is, you might add a small trim. Say you've got a 1% or 2% on your rudder, but what you're thinking about is your joystick. So you're moving your joystick around, you're trying to trim it, what you don't notice is that your rudder is creeping off and it's escaping. It's going off onto the side there and it's now reached full deflection left and I haven't moved my feet. I haven't thought about it, but I've essentially trimmed myself into a spin. So I need to move my rudder all the way, 100% more nearly, to make it back to neutral and then trim again. And this can get really, really confusing and this is why a lot of people seem to get confused and kind of crash and get stuck because they add trim accidentally because you haven't returned your controls to centre, you're just kind of out of habit perhaps holding the rudder pedals or something else in place. So let's talk about the next method for trimming which in some respects help alle helps alleviate some of those problems. So instead of having the instant trim we can switch over to central position trimmer mode. So in this mode it eliminates the problem of our controls suddenly leaping forwards but it has its own issues too so let's demonstrate that. Alright back in the Apache and this time with the central trimmer mode so we are setting up now we're just kind of calm the aircraft into a nice position for cruising and we're going to press the trim control. You notice how nothing happened, the controls are still centred, the aircraft's nice and calm, it didn't double our inputs and that's good. But here's where it gets confusing, you see if I move my stick forwards, nothing's happening if I move my rudder pedals to the left. No inputs. However, once I return my controls to centre, now I can apply input. And so you can avoid that situation where the controls jump forward on you, but you've got a new problem. If you forget to centre your controls, they don't respond. So for example, again, if I was trimming, sorry, if I was uh, trimming and I wanted to have a little bit of left rudder pedal as I did it, but I wasn't consciously thinking about it, so I've just added a bit subconsciously as I say, okay, my stick needs to come back, and I want to trim the new position here. Now, as I carry on flying, I don't notice anything's wrong. But then later on I decide, okay, I need some left pedal now. Nothing happens. So you've got to remember that both axes are trimmed by this if they're set to it, and to return your controls before you try and make any more actions, because if you forget, you can get really confused and really screwed. Otherwise though, this is a really good trimmer mode, because you can set the trim, let go of the stick, let it turn to centre, and you can know with confidence you're not going to suddenly veer off and double your inputs, and that's very, very useful. Now, do you prefer this mode over the instant trimmer? That's going to be up for debate. I'm not entirely sure which one I prefer myself. With a bit of practice when using the instant trimmer, you can, of course, 
compensate for the fact it's going to double and you can trim and release or make smaller trim actions to kind of additively get to the trim point you want to have. Whereas having the central trimmer mode, you end up running that risk of forgetting and getting stuck and unable to put any inputs. So it's it goes either way. It's, it's for the most part fine. I quite like both, but with caution. I don't entirely know which one I want to use myself going forwards, but you should definitely try both modes. Now there is one more mode, and it's got a little bit of utility to it too. So the final mode is intended for people who have a physical dampener, like a magnetic system, or don't have springs, for example in your rudder pedals, you can set this up, and what it does is it disables all the virtual axes decentering and trimming inside DCS. Now this means that if I move my stick forward and apply trim, it's not going to trim. It's going to tell the sim that's the trim position, and it will have a reference mark, but it won't trim the aircraft, because it is expecting your physical hardware to do the job of trimming for you. Now this is only really useful to those of you with the proper hardware, but it's kind of slightly cheating, it's not really intended to be used this way, but if you set the pedals without springs and force feedback, for example, onto just your rudder pedals, now you've disabled the trimmer on your rudder pedals. So if you don't like the rudder pedals being trimmed, and you're prepared to hold them, you can set that and the rudder pedals won't trim. Meanwhile, you can keep your stick in the central or uh, instant modes, and both of them, and it'll work just fine. With all that said, trim is your friend, but also your worst enemy starting out. It's a crucial tool to avoid arm ache during long flights and allows for greater precision, but it takes some time to understand. If you're struggling with it, the overlay is invaluable, and I'd strongly recommend experimenting with both trimmer modes, although I probably lean towards the central trimming mode myself, as it allows you to avoid those sudden jumps. All helicopters bar the Apache have a trim reset button within DCS, which can get you out of trouble and restore one-to-one -one control. Sadly, the Apache doesn't. In an ideal world, we'd have a fictional reset button for accessibility, which I'm hoping we will see added. Not everyone has access to a 22-year-old force feedback stick. Much to my dismay, force feedback doesn't really exist in the modern home sim market, so we're stuck dealing with sprung joysticks. This makes it rather unintuitive and a choice of compromises in our sims. Ultimately, helicopters are hard to fly, and the sim makes that job just a little bit harder. Take your time, practice, and eventually you will get there. I hope you've enjoyed, and take care.